Bismillah Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalam Ala Rasulillah Namina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa man tamasaka bi sunnatihi Ila yawmiddin Thumma amma ba'd Qala imam Ahmed bin Hanbun Rahimullahu ta'ala Wa khayru hadihi al-umma Ba'da nabiyyiha Abu Bakr As-Siddiq ثم عمر بن خطاب ثم عثمان بن عفان The Imam رحمه الله تعالى He says that the best of this ummah after its prophet is Abu Bakr As-Siddiq then Umar ibn Al-Khattab then Uthman bin Affan and this is on page 30 of the translation for those who would like to read along. Mada? Nah, with this book here. It's one it should be one on the shelf, inshallah. To the Then uh, the Imam goes on and he says, Nukadimu ha ulay thalata kama kadamahum ashab rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yachtalifu fi dalik. He says, and we, pre- we proceed and we give precedence to those three just as the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala anhum uh, gave precedence to them. So just as the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum they gave precedence uh, to these three. And they, the companions, they didn't differ with regards to that. They did not differ with regards to that. Naam. ثم قال إمام ثم بعد هؤلاء ثلاثة أصحاب شورة الخمسة and then after those three then the companions of the شورة and they are five the companions of the شورة and they are five they are علي ابن أبي طالب والزبير والطلحة وعبد الرحمن بن عوف وَالسَّعَدْ بِنْ أَبِي وَقَّاسْ كُلُّهُمْ يَصْلُحُ لِلْخِلَافَةِ وَكُلُّهُمْ إِمَامٌ He says, and then after those three companions, meaning Abu Bakr, وَعُمَرْ وَالْعُثْمَانْ رضي الله تعالى عنهم Then after those three, then the five companions of the shura, and they are one, Ali bin Abi Talib, Ali bin Abi Talib uh, Number two, Az-Zubair Number three, Talha Number four, Abdurrahman bin Auf And number five, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas And each of them, they were fit and appropriate to be the Khalifa And each of them was in his own right an Imam Naam. And then the Imam he goes on to say وَنَذْهَبُوا فِي ذَلِكَ إِلَىٰ حَدِيثِ إِبْنُ عُمَرِ And with regards to this, we go to the hadith of Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما Where he said كُنَّا نَعُدُّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم حَيًّا وَأَصْحَابُهُ مُتَوَافِرُونَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ ثُمَّ عُمَرٍ ثُمَّ عُثْمَانٍ ثُمَّ نَسْكُتُ He said while the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was still alive And his companions were widespread We used to consider Meaning in the, in the order uh, Abu Bakr to be the first Then Uthman uh, Afwan Abu Bakr he was the first Then Umar Then Uthman And then after Uthman We used to remain silent Then after Uthman We used to remain silent Naam ثم قال إمام ثم بعد أصحاب الشورى أهل البدر من المهاجرين ثم أهل البدر من الأنصار من أصحاب الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وورضي الله تعالى عنهم على قدر الهجرة وسابقة أولا فأولا نعم. It says then after the five companions of the shura 
then and he's enumerating the order of superiority of the of the sahab and the best of them then they were the the three Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman radiallahu after them then the ashab al shura naam and they were five from Ali uh, al Zubair wa Talha wa Abdul Rahman ibn Auf wa Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas naam and then uh, after wa alaykum salam salam then after those five then uh, the people of Badr meaning from the muhajirin of Badr and then from the Ansar of Badr and so on and so forth now and he's saying that and then those who fought in Badr from the Ansar and from amongst the campaigns of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa radiallahu ta'ala anhum each one's rank is according to his migration and his and his uh, precedence in the religion according to his migration and how in in what time frame in which they came to the religion now and the like ثم قال الإمام رحمة الله عليه ثم أفضل الناس بعد هؤلاء أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم القرن الذي بعث فيهم كل من 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 صحبة أو من صاحبه سنة أو شهرا أو يوما أو ساعة أو رآه فهو من أصحابه صلوات الله والسلام عليه وله من الصحبة على قدر ما صحبه وكانت سابقته معه وسمع منه والنظر إليه. He said, and then the most superior of them of mankind after these, then they are the companions of the Messenger of Allah. صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله تعالى عنهم the generation in which he was sent everyone who accompanied him whether it was for senaten a year or for a month or for a day or for an hour or just merely saw him نعم كل من راه whoever just saw him طيب then he was from and amongst the companions and inshallah ta'ala we're gonna, gonna, they're going to come some some uh, some tafsir some tafsilat hawla uh, hadha mawdu' with regard uh, around this issue inshallah it says his companionship is according to the extent to that which he accompanied him and to the extent to which he proceeded in being with him and heard him and looked at him and heard from him and looked at him naam fa adanahum suhbatan huwa afdalu min qarn alladhi lam yarahu he said, and the one who uh, who was with him, or has the, the, the least, if you can say that, yeah, the one who has the least share of, of, of companionship, then he is still better than those generations who have never saw him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَوْ لَقُوا اللَّهِ بِجَمِيعِ الْأَعْمَالِ كَانَ هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ صَحِبُوا النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa وَرَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ وَرَأَوْهُ وَسَمِعُوا مِنْهُ He says that the one who was the least from the companions then he will be better than, and more excellent than all the generations that came after them even if, they, even if they met Allah with all the good deeds despite that those who accompanied the Prophet ﷺ and saw him and heard from him then they are still superior وَمَنْ رَآهُ بِعَيْنِهِ وَآمَنَ بِهِ وَلَوْ سَاعَةً أَفْضَلُوا بِصُحْبَتِهِ مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ وَلَوْ عَمِلُوا كُلَّ أَعْمَالُ الْخَيْرِ He says, and whoever saw him with his eyes and he believed in him, even if it was just for an hour, then he was more excellent on the account of his companionship with the Prophet wasallam. than the tabi'een, even if they, the tabi'een, did every good action or every action of goodness. <coughs> All of this is from the, the Metan, وَبِإِذْنِ Ta'ala, we will have some explanation from the Alama, قُضِيلَةِ الشَّيْخِ الشَّيْخِ رَبِيعِ بِنْ حَادِيَ الْمَدْخَلِيمِ The Shaykh, he says, after mentioning this portion from the text, وَخَيْرُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ بَعْدَ نَبِيُّهَا أَوْ بَعْدَ نَبِيِّهَا أَبُوْ بَكْرِ الصِّدِّيقِ That the best of this Ummah, after its Prophet, then verily it is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. He says, هذا 
fi fadl sahaba he said this is speaking about the superiority of the sahaba wa fadl sahaba thabit bi kitab Allah wa sunnat rasul Allah wa bil ijma' al muslimin wa bi ijma' al muslimin ghayr al ahl al dalal min al khawarij wal rawafid he says that this is something that is firmly established in the by the book of Allah and by the sunnah of his messenger the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa bi ijma' and also by consensus consensus of the muslimin consensus of the muslims other than those who are stray from the khawarij and from the rawafid meaning the rawafid the shia naam fa al quran the quran it shows their superiority naam the quran it shows their superiority wa bayyana manzilatahum and it makes clear their their status it makes clear their station wa makanati and it makes wa makanatuhum it makes clear their uh, the status with regards to uh, their standing with respect to the rest of the muslims naam كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى عز الله تعالى he says والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن as Allah Taala he says and those who proceeded and came first and foremost from the muhajirun from those who made hijrah and from the ansar والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان and from those who followed them in good رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارِ And Allah has prepared for them gardens under which uh, rivers flow. And He has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow. Naam. The shahid here in this ayah is that Allah Ta'ala, He says that He is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. And not just pleased with them, the sahaba, but pleased with those who follow them. Pleased with those who follow them. So in this ayah, it clearly established the superiority of the Sahaba over the rest of the Muslims. Because the rest of the Muslims, in every age and in every time that came after the age and time of the Sahaba, have been commanded to follow the Sahaba. Have been commanded to follow the Sahaba. But the, the, but the opposite is not true. The Sahaba were not commanded to follow us, but rather we have been commanded to follow the Sahaba. So therein it establishes their superiority over us. Because we have to follow them, they have not been commanded to follow us. But rather we have been commanded to follow them, and thus it's established clearly their superiority. Uh, and Allah Ta'ala, He says, لا يستوي, لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وكلا وكلا وعد الله الحسنى. Allah Taala He says that they are not equal. The ones who they spent in their wealth and they fought in jihad before the conquest of Mecca, but those of you who did so later, meaning those of you who fought and you spent your wealth after the conquest of Mecca, later on. Allah Ta'ala, He says, such are those who will have a higher degree, uh, uh, yani, meaning the ones who fought and spent before, they have a higher degree than those who fought and spent afterwards. But Allah has promised all of them goodness. Allah Ta'ala, He has promised all of them goodness. Allah has promised that all of them will, will uh, achieve good. However, what is clear from the ayah is that they are not equal. Those who fought and they spent from their wealth before the conquering of Mecca and those who fought and they spent from their wealth after the conquering of Mecca. Those who did so before, then they are superior. Now, nah, they are superior. This is another ayah as is found in Surah Al-Hadid which establishes the superiority of the Sahaba. So the Shaykh, he says, فَالَّذِي أَنْفَقَ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْفَتْحِ وَقَاتًا نعم من السابقين الأولين وعد الله الحسنى وعده الله الحسنى that whoever who had fought who had spent his wealth before the conquering of Mecca and he fought في سبيل الله from those who came first and foremost وعده الله الحسنى that Allah has promised for them goodness Allah تعالى he has promised for them a goodness and a good reward
نعم والذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وعدهم الله الحسن and those who they spent in their wealth and they fought in the way of Allah after the conquest of Mecca Allah Ta'ala also he promised them as well husna na'am wa kullin wa'adahu Allah Ta'ala al-husna Allah Ta'ala he has a promise for all of them husna but what is clear the shahid is that those who have done so before the conquest of Mecca they are superior and they are better than those who have done so after the conquest of Mecca na'am so this ayah firmly and clearly establishes the superiority of the Sahaba. Now, the Shaykh also mentions Allah Taala's statement: "Muhammadun Rasulullah, wa ladina ma'ahu ashidda, ala al-kuffari ruhama bainahum." That Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and that those who believe. And that those who yani, are, are, uh, are with him, those who are with him, meaning the Sahaba, Ashidda ala al kuffar they are harsh, they are stern against the disbelievers. They are severe against the disbelievers. Naam, Ruhama baynahum. And they are easy amongst themselves. And they are easy amongst themselves. Meaning they deal with each other in an easy way. They deal with each other in a pleasant way, and the like. This subhanallah, there is a, a dars just within this portion of the ayah. Because if you look at the Muslims of now, look at the Muslims nowadays, you find the opposite. They are harsh to the Muslims. So nice and gentle huh, to the kuffar. And maybe you have seen this. You may have a, a, a Muslim who is employed by another Muslim. And you may find that Muslim speaking to his brother. Huh? Who works for him, granted, but his brother in Islam speaking to him as if he's nothing, speaking to him nasty, speaking to him as if he's worthless and the like. And then there comes in Mr. Smith, Mr. John, Mr. Whoever, Naam, and the smile comes on, he's pleasant. Oh, how are you doing today, Mr. John? I hope everything is okay. But then to his brother, he's speaking to him as if he's a piece of dirt. Naam. Now, this is not an avocation uh, to be ruled. Like this to the kuffar, nah, we're not saying that. But the point is, is that you find that the Muslims, the Sahaba, they were very easy, very gentle with one another. They put everything in its proper place. They put everything in its proper place. They were nice when they had to be nice. They were rough when they had to be rough. But they put things in its proper place. As you find, we don't do that right now. You find we don't do that. And if you compare a lot of times our treatment to our brothers and sisters in Islam as compared to the treatment uh, that we that we yield to the kuffar, Allah understand. Uh, Allah Ta'ala described the Sahaba as being severe and stern against the kuffar and, and easy uh, amongst themselves and merciful amongst themselves. Allah Ta'ala, He goes on to describe them. He says, Tarahum ruka'an sujjada. You'll find them bowing and you'll find them prostrating themselves to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in prayers. Naam, wa yabtaghuna fadban min Allah. وَرِضْوَانَ And they are seeking the bounty from Allah Ta'ala and the good pleasure. Naam. سِمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ You'll see the mark of them in their face, meaning the mark of prostration upon their faces. As Allah Ta'ala He explains, مِنْ أَثْرِ السُّجُودِ That you will see this mark upon their faces, مِنْ أَثْرِ السُّجُودِ From the prostrations. You'll see the prostration marks upon their faces. ذَلِكَ مَثَلُهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاءِ This is their likeness, this is the similitude that is contained in the Torah about them. Naam. Already from that there's an indication that what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He prophesies about the Sahaba in the previous books. SubhanAllah. Which points to what? Obviously their superiority. It points to their superiority. The generation that's alive right now, He wasn't spoken about in the previous books. Allah Musta'an. But this shows what the superiority of the Sahaba. Because whenever you find the word mu'min and, and alike in the Quran, it means Sahaba first and foremost. Naam. It means the Sahaba first and foremost. They are the first to enter into that. And what makes that even more abundantly clear is that Allah Ta'ala, He's, just, he's describing what those who are with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ala kulli hal, this is their likeness inside of the Torah. وَفِي الْإِنْجِيلِ Inside of the Injil, كَالْزَرْعِنْ 
akhraja shata is like a uh, how would you say is is, uh, is, 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 is 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 like a seed that has been sown right and it sends forth uh, is uh, is shoot naam bay kazar in akhraja shata فأزاره فاستغلث فاستوى على سوقه يعجبه الزراع ليغيظ بهم الكفار is like a seed which sends forth its shoot then makes it strong and then it becomes thick and it stands up straight and stern uh, which it delights the ones who sold it, it delights you know what I mean the farmers, the ones who have sold these uh, these shoots and the like and these seeds, that they may uh, that they may the Sahaba any you know, that they may what enrage the kufar, that they may enrage uh, the kufar. Naam. Wa ayda Allah Taala, and it's also something to. To contemplate on in this particular portion of the ayah, ليغيظ بهم الكفار, so that they may be of those who enrage uh, the kufar. Something to think about. وأيضا الشيخ يسأل قوله تعالى في سورة الحشر للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم ومن ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانه and those from those poor from the muhajirun the poor ones those فقراء from the muhajirun that the spoils of war or the war booty or share will be for them, will be for the poor from the muhajirun, those whom they were kicked out of their houses, of their lands, and uh, their monies and, and the like were taken away from them, and, 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 and all of this, they were expelled from their homes and expelled from their properties, but they were what? They were seeking Allah Ta'ala's bounties and seeking to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And they were seeking to give aid and help to Allah and His religion and to His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah Ta'ala, He says أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ That they are the ones who are the truthful ones. These are the ones who are truthful. الَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانِ مِنْ قَبْرِهِمْ يحبون من حاجر إليهم ولا يجد في صدورهم حاجة and that those who prepared the da'w those who uh, how do you say and those who before them had prepared their homes opened up their homes for them in Medina and those who had adopted the faith those who had acquired the faith they loved those who immigrated to them they love those who immigrated to them and they don't find inside of their chest any type of difficulty. They don't find in their chest any type of difficulty. Naam. They don't find in their hearts any type of difficulty nor any type of jealousy or anything in their breasts for that which they have been given from the war booty. From that which they have uh, been given from the spoils of war. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِيهِمْ خَاصَةً And you will find that they give, that they give the immigrants, they, that meaning that the Ansar, they gave to the Muhajirun precedents. They preferred them over themselves, even though they may have been in need of it. That they will give to the, to, to the Muhajirun first, even though they themselves may have been in need of it, but they put their brother's needs before uh, their own needs. Naam. And Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَمَا يُقْفَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And whoever is saved from his own covetousness, whoever is saved from his own stinginess, 
whoever is saved from his own miserly list, uh, then such are the ones who are successful. Then such are the ones who are successful. When one just reflects on the meaning of these of of, uh, of, uh, of these ayat, he sees tremendous praise for the muhajirun, those who were kicked and expelled out of their houses and their homes for the sake of Allah Taala, and for the ansar, those who opened up their homes and prepared and made things easy and helped and aided those who made hijrah unto them. And then not just that, but then even when the spoils of war were being given out, and they, they, they didn't become jealous, uh, nor did they have any trouble, any animosity in their hearts for that which the, the, the muhajirun were given. But you find that what? That the ansar, they actually preferred and put the muhajirun even before themselves. They put the needs of their brothers who had immigrated amongst before their own needs. So Allah Ta'ala he tells us about this beautiful uh, characteristic of, of, uh, of being able to subdue one's stinginess and to subdue the miserliness that may come from an individual. So Allah Ta'ala he says, وَمَن يُقْتَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ That whoever is able, or whoever is saved from the covetedness and the stinginess of himself, then verily such are those who are successful. Allah Ta'ala he says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ And those who come after them, those who come after whom? The Sahaba, from the, those who come after the Muhajirun and those who come after the Ansar, and those who come after them, na'am, and it tells you a characteristic that is supposed to be our characteristic, that we, how we supposed to be like. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبِقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ Is that they say, Oh Allah, forgive us, forgive us for our sins, and forgive our brothers who preceded us in, in Iman. Forgive our brothers who preceded us. In Iman, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And O oh Allah, do not put in our hearts any type of animosity for those who believe. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ O oh our Lord, verily you are رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ That O oh our Lord, verily you are the one who is full of kindness, the one who is most merciful. The one who is full of kindness, the one who is most merciful. These ayat are tremendous, and the benefits and the treasures that are contained therein are many. But from those benefits is this pointing out the superiority of the Sahaba. The superiority of the Sahaba. How Allah Ta'ala praised the Sahaba inside the Qur'an for their many beautiful characteristics. After such a praise, how can they ever come to them dispraise? It's not possible. Naam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was asked, who is the best of mankind? He said, Khairun Nas Tarni. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ And the best of mankind is my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. After such a praise from the Messenger of Allah, صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ Who can come after that, who can come after that praise with any type of kalam, any type of speech that is uh, disparaging against the Sahaba. Naam. And then, after the clear guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in illustrating to us the way in which we are to be, the characteristic that we are to have, the manner that we are to be, as Allah ta'ala He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ And those who come after them, meaning the Sahaba, يَقُولُونَ They say what? رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا O Allah, O our Lord, forgive us. Forgive us only? La. Allah ta'ala He says, رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبِقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ That, O oh our Lord, forgive us. Naam. And forgive our brothers who preceded us in faith. Forgive our brothers who preceded us in faith. But not just forgive us and forgive our brothers who preceded us in faith, but also what? وَلَا تَجَعَلْ And do not put... Do not allow to go into يعني في قلوبنا. Do not allow to go inside of our hearts غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And do not let it be inside of our hearts any type of animosity for those who believe. Now as we explain, when you hear mu'min الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا المؤمنون, and the like, when you hear these terms in the Qur'an, the believers, those who believe, and so on and so forth, and that which is like it, then first and foremost it means the Sahaba. First and foremost it means the Sahaba because they were the first to believe. And they were the first 
uh, of the believers, and they were the first of the Muslims. So if you hear the word Muslim, Muslimun, Mu'min, Mu'minun, Na'am, Al-Ladina, Amanu, and the like, first and foremost, it means a Sahaba. It means the Sahaba, then those who follow them. So we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to put inside of our hearts any type of animosity, any type of hatred for the Sahaba. For the Sahaba. Naam. And then those who follow upon their way after them and the like. But you find that all of mankind is not like this. So the Shaykh he says, فَأَعْدَاءُ Sahaba. من من الروافض والخوارج ليس من إخواني. He said, but you'll find that the that the رافضة, the Shia, and the خوارج, they have taken the Sahaba. They're like they're enemies to the Sahaba. They're enemies to the Sahaba. نعم. So thus and therefore, they're not from their brothers. They're not from their brothers. نعم. Because their brothers are what? Are those who are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. Their brothers are those who are begging Allah ta'ala not to put inside of their chest any type of animosity towards the Sahaba. So now, where does one stand with regards to this ayah? Where does one stand who speaks ill of the Sahaba? Where does one stand who curses the Sahaba? Where does one stand who belittles the Sahaba in light of this ayah? Now, is a person that's okay upon Huda, or a person who's upon Balala? Obviously, is a person who's upon Balala. Now, because the eye is clear, the eye is explicit in the manner that we are to be uh, with regards to the Sahaba. The Shaykh he says that these ones from the Rafida and from the Khawarij, he says, بَلْ قُلُوبُهُمْ أَمْتَلَأَتْ بِالْغِلْ وَالْحِقْدَ عَلَىٰ أَصْحَابِ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ Salawat Allah wa salamuhu alayhi wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. He said, but you find that their hearts are filled with animosity and for hatred for the campaigns of the Messenger of Allah. Uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Wa athar hadha al-ghil al-khabith wal-hiqd fi nufusihim zahrat ala al-sinatihim. He said, and you will find that the repercussions of this animosity, this evil, disgusting animosity and of this hatred that they have within their cells, within their souls, you will find that it comes out upon their tongues. It comes out upon their tongues. وَعَلَىٰ أَقْلَامِهِمْ And also upon their writings. أَقْلَامِهِمْ At takfir of sahaba They say that the sahaba are kuffar. Naam. They say the sahaba like the, like the rafida who said that what? Who said that uh, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum are kuffar naam uh, like the takfir that the khwarij they, they, they made of Ali and those companions who were with him and the like the takfir which ultimately led to them assassinating Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu tayyib so their evil it comes out and you find them making takfir of the sahaba and you find them uh, belittling the sahaba wa ta'an fihim and you find them uh, cursing and speaking ill and speaking bad about the Sahaba. Naam, you find them speaking bad about the Sahaba. This is something that is tremendously evil. وَأَخَذَ Imam Malik رَحِمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنْ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى Imam Malik, he took from Allah Ta'ala's statement, لِيَغِيظَ بِهِمُ الْكُفَّارُ So that the kuffar will become enraged by them. بَهُ Meaning the Sahaba. The, you know, the Sahaba, they used to make the kuffar angry. They used to make the kufar mad and the like. And also he said Allah Ta'ala's statement wa qawluhu ta'ala. He also took from Allah Ta'ala the other statement of Allah Ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ That oh Allah, uh, and those who came after them, they used to supplicate and would say, Oh our Lord, forgive us and forgive our brothers who preceded us in Iman. فَقَوَلَ so Imam Malik he would say, فَقَوَلَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ فِي الْفَيْءِ He would say then, if, 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 if they don't have these characteristics and they are those who they made, they arranged by the Sahaba and they have become, uh, and, and they don't make this, this, this dua for the Sahaba and the like, and they are those who hate the Sahaba, then they don't have any share of the war booty. يَعْنِي الْفَيْءِ لِمَا يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ 
ويرتضى عنهم ويعرف منزلتهم ويدعو بهم الدعاء ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان he said meaning they have no portion of they have no portion of the spoils that rightfully belongs to those who come after the time of the sahaba but they are pleased with the sahaba and they acknowledge and they know their 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 uh, their status and they know their position and they know their superiority and they also make this dua rabbana ighfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabaquna bil iman that oh our lord forgive us and forgive our brothers who preceded us in iman wa amma alladhi ya'ti yal'anuhum wa yasubbuhum wa yukaffiruhum na'am fala yastahiq shay'an min al fay and but the one who comes and then he curses them and he speaks bad about them and he considers them to be kufar and and uh, and the like then he doesn't deserve anything from the portion of these spoils wa qad wa qad yadkhulu fil kufri billahi ta'ala and he may even enter into kufr in allah ta'ala كما قال الله تعالى as Allah تعالى says ليغيظ بهم الكفار so that the kufar will become enraged by them so if there's an individual and they find that the sahaba enrages them the the sahaba makes them irate the sahaba gets them vexed and the like then they need to be scared because the sahaba they enrage and they make irate and they make vex who the kufar na yeah, the kufar So if a person finds this is his case, then he needs to be scared, and he really needs to check himself. And the Shaykh, he says, وَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ That means, and we seek refuge in Allah Ta'ala from the likes of this. Ameen. Then the Shaykh, he goes on and he says, ثُمَّ عَمَرْ إِبْنَ الْخَطَّابِ ثُمَّ عُثْمَانِ And then after Abu Bakr, Umar, and then Uthman, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنْهُمَا as there comes the hadith from Bukhari which was mentioned uh, but bismillah ta'ala we will save this discussion for the next time we will continue with this chapter as we have some pages to go and speaking about the sahaba the superiority of the sahaba and the stance of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah with regards to the aqidah uh, of the sahaba and the status and the stand and, and, uh, and the position that the sahaba have with regards to the ummah na'am so inshallah ta'ala naktafi wa natawaqqaf huna fa naktafi bi hadha al-qadr wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in